Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We have spent the last two days, Lisa Martin, Dave Vellante, covering CrowdStrike Falcon 23. We've had an amazing two days, Dave, full of- Good show, right? Amazing show. Mm. It was- Your first time. My first time at Falcon, their seventh, our second as theCUBE, but my first time. Over 4,000 customers and partners here it looks like, based on your observations from Blaster, the ecosystem here exhibiting has more than doubled. What are your takeaways from Falcon 23? It's just so I mean, much. That, you know, that was, Lisa, my big, my, I mean, I was very impressed last year. It was a great show. I learned a lot about CrowdStrike, especially the products. I mean, I was really, really impressed. But the one sort of area that I was kind of disappointed and left me flat was the ecosystem last year. It was small, and it's, by the way, it's still small. It's not huge, but it's double. So. <laughs> You got a $3 billion company with a $40 billion market cap that's doubling the size of its ecosystem, at least from the standpoint of the exhibitors here. This is going to explode, mark my words. It was interesting to hear from Daniel Bernard just now. Yeah. He was saying TCS, HCL, Infosys. He didn't mention PwC, but I got to believe you know, they're going to hop on the bandwagon. Obviously Deloitte is here. WWT, you know, a giant partner of companies like Dell and, and others. Big, big presence you know, globally. Um, and then you know, add in the Accentures of the world, Cognizance, EY, I and mean, they they're all using CrowdStrike, but they're not here. And so they are going to take over this show, I, I, I predict. The other big thing to me was the pricing from the financial analyst meeting. The, the, the NASDAQ was way off today. And, Did that and, surprise you? You know, who knows? I mean, I can't predict what the, the stock market's going to do, but it was off. I think there's concerns about you know, soft landing and inflation and recession and blah, blah, blah. But, and, but CrowdStrike was basically un, un, uh, unchanged, which says to me that the, whatever they told the analyst, you know, it was, yeah, it was, it was down almost a percent. But, um, but, but in, a, in a market that was down one and a half percent. So it says to me that the, the message to the analyst was well received. Um, we'll start seeing reports come out. I, I can't believe it wouldn't be well received. The company's got so much momentum. Yeah. But I wonder if they didn't give the kind of guidance that the analyst wanted to hear. So the pricing on Charlotte AI was the, the big we're waiting for yeah. this event. And we talked last night that we thought it was going to be a, a low cost per endpoint and then some kind of query bundle on top of that. And that's exactly what they did. It's $20 a year per endpoint, $20 a year. Now we said last night that the entry level cost for CrowdStrike for, per endpoint is around, I want to say 110, 110, $120 a year, somewhere in per there. Endpoint. It's a little over $100 a year. And so for another $20 a year, you can get Charlotte. That's per endpoint, Charlotte AI. So that's dirt cheap. Um, and when you compare that to the average, let's say the FTE of a security analyst is 175 grand a year, 150, $175,000 a year, uh, fully loaded, and you're going to now they make that person more productive. Yeah. I mean, let's say you have 10 of those, you know, a couple million dollars in FTE costs. Um, if you can make them 5% more productive, that's 100 grand that drops right to your bottom line. Uh, and I think Charlotte AI has the potential to do a lot more than make you 5% more productive. I don't know, how much, does Ch how much more productive does ChatGPT make us? You know, maybe it's 10% overall yeah. in a day. Yeah. You use it, I use I it do. a lot. I do, absolutely. Yeah. I'd, say it's, I'd say it adds 10%, gives, frees up 10%. Um, I don't know, it makes me better. Gives me new ideas. I think so like too. That, I think right? so too. It makes me think of ways to interact and engage and ask questions a little bit differently. Um, right. So, and I. But to your point, it's generative, so it's changing. So, it it positions itself as accurate. But we have to kind of go in there with our own human minds and kind of adjust and tweak, right. and especially to kind of fit your own voice. And there's a quality aspect. Yeah. So that's you know that's kind of a, a fuzzy measure. But in security, you know they're going to know fast. So I think so basically twenty dollars a year per endpoint and then plus a, a, a per query or, or, a, or a bundled cost that way you can you know, chew up your queries. And it was interesting, I mean, it's either going to be, a, got to be a subscription, so it'll be a one year or a three year. 
there, our information suggests from talking to folks that it, most people do a three year, because right. it's a better deal. You, you look at the ETR data, CrowdStrike churn is like non-existent. I don't think I went into that in my last, oh yeah, I did, I did. In, the, in my last breaking analysis, you can see on the CrowdStrike post, I'll, I'll just pull it up now, but the churn is, is there's no churn. I mean, it's, it's, it's single digit, low single digit churn, you know, if that. I mean, it's really, you know, de minimis. Um, I'm looking at it now. I mean, it, it doesn't even show up in the numbers. It's like less that than 3% wow. churn. Wow. Um, and, and the other thing is, it's even smaller than the percent of customers that are spending less, right? So they got a really good net score and a off the charts net score, which is a measure of the net percentage of customers that are spending more, off the charts in the global 2000. Yes. So I guess the point is most people, <laughs> where was I going with this? The point I was making was that you're not going to churn you know you're going to do the, you're going to spend over the next several years. So why not lock in for a three-year right, term and get a better deal? You know, think about it. If when 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 real estate, commercial real estate is down, and you get an opportunity to for a land a lease to go one year, three year, five year, maybe even longer, if you think you're going to be there, you might as well take the good rate. Yeah. And so that's what I think many customers are going to do. And I guess the other big takeaway was you know products. I mean the products here. Are, um, rocking, yeah. you know, they yeah. got, they, we're up to, Daniel Bernard said up to 27 modules now, up for, from 23. Right. Uh, so they keep, and it's still single agent, single ingest, or ingest once, used many times. So that's, I think, a big deal. And then the other thing I said last night, which I thought I missed in my breaking analysis, which some LinkedIn commenter shared with me is, what about the go to market? Right. That's another piece of the secret weapon. And I thought Daniel Bernard did a really good job of explaining the investment that CrowdStrike is making in the ecosystem and partners, because we've seen it so many times, having that indirect channel through partners, game changer. Drives sales productivity through the roof, drives margins, keeps your cost of sales down and enables scale. Well, and their Accelerate program is only getting off the ground and it sounds like they've already done a tremendous amount of work with the ecosystem just really synergistically to define in the right incentives to, to drive what they're doing with AWS, what they're doing with the Deloitte's of the world, and, and some of the other partners that we talked to today. We had a good, a good community of ecosystem partners involved, but what Daniel was describing as that Accelerate program, I mean, I love the name Accelerate. It's perfect for them. Everything here is about speed of innovation. F1 was brought up a lot as a, as a really great metaphor. Um, they had some good, Good metaphors. I, one of the things too is the chain smokers are tonight. Yeah, that's right. the entertainment. And I didn't realize that they actually have uh, a venture firm. They're investors. In cyber, they yeah. are. Yeah. So just from a thematic perspective, everything I thought at this event was very well woven together into a really cohesive story. And so I think, to your point, the momentum that they have is is it's impressive. You know, it's funny. That, I, I mean, it's a company that it, it's not a hype machine. But it does go really good marketing. Yes. And it and it and it weaves in like little depositions, like you were describing earlier this morning. Our kickoff, what happened with the the Microsoft, you know, uh, bleed in. Yeah. Um, where they were talking about all these security problems, and then all of a sudden Microsoft comes in, <laughs> little subliminal message. Yep. Um, Daniel was talking about certain companies going potentially going private. He's talking about Sentinel One. He didn't mention them by name, but that's the the fud that they're throwing into the market. So they'll do little little things like that. I think Microsoft is interesting. Ali Mellon, I think, nailed it. Um, they are going to be there. Microsoft's always going to be there. They're ubiquitous. Um, they are. They're. They'll continue to be a pain yeah. in 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 you know as a competitor. But that's fine. CrowdStrike knows how to deal with the Microsofts of the Definitely. world. Definitely. Right, I mean, Microsoft's great in Microsoft environments, but take them out of their home court and it's just not as interesting. And as well, CrowdStrike's capabilities have you know, so much more depth and, and, and breadth and I think innovation relative to what you see from some of the big cloud providers. Yeah. Not that cloud providers do a great job with security I don't know, Microsoft <laughs> maybe gets some issues, but still, I think Azure is a secure platform, as is AWS, as is Google. Yeah. Particularly Google is really top-notch security, 
But when it comes to supporting the SecOps team and tools for the security team uh, beyond that shared responsibility model, companies like CrowdStrike can really thrive. And as we pointed out many, many times on this show, security, no, no, one, no vendor has like, like a large market share. Right. Maybe Microsoft, because they, who knows what's in their security business, they're so big. But as far as the independent security companies, CrowdStrike, Palo Alto, Okta, Zscaler, CyberArk, you know, on and on and on and on, the thousands of companies. I think the, nobody has 10% share. Yeah. I mean, maybe 10%, maybe Palo's got 10%. You know, CrowdStrike, three billion out of, let's call it an $80 billion market. You know, so, so Palo Alto doesn't even have 8%, it's, it's a 10%, it's less than that. So, tons of opportunity yeah. here. Yep. Um, for everybody, but for CrowdStrike in particular. I think so, I think that was a, a theme that we heard. Well, I had a great time covering the event, Dave, with you the last two days. We have a lot of great content coming up on theCUBE this fall. You want to check out thecube.net, which might be where you are now. Look at what the upcoming events are. Lots of great content coming your way. You can find all of our on-demand content from CrowdStrike and from all other events on thecube.net. All of our editorials on siliconangle.com. Dave, always a pleasure co-hosting with you. Thanks, Looking Lisa. Looking forward to our Good next to event. Yeah. You too. Yeah, we'll be out here in a couple of weeks, right? We got UiPath. I think we are back out here. <laughs> Coming up, you forward six, I think. That's right. Six, yep. UiPath yep. forward six. Yeah, they're All back. Right. UiPath is back on track. That's so. right. Yeah. And we hope to see you there. Check out again the schedule. We'll see you soon. <laughs>